and welcome to another episode of Launch Mass. In this episode, I want to talk about Step Functions Express Workflows. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is the ninth episode on LaunchMass, so we are kind of in the middle almost and in this video I want to talk about a new launch that is one of my favorite launches of whole reInvent, that is the Step Functions Express Workflows. So I have been talking a lot about uh, step functions in this channel. I love that. And since 2016, when they were launched, I saw so much potential to have uh, used step functions with my Lambda functions to create serverless workflows. But if you have been using step functions, you might have the same problems that I did. The price is quite crazy because step functions are not built for that thing in mind, they were built for really long processes and workflows involving humans, other services, integrations and a lot of complexity. While we were trying to build these really simple uh, workflows, putting together uh, lambda functions that were um, using the single responsibility principle, doing one thing and one thing only and connecting them together in nice, nice workflow. So, Luckily, AWS heard our customers, because I was not the only one complaining, and launched this new type of step functions that are designed for this type of use cases, for building really simple workflows with lambdas and ephemeral computing and other serverless services in mind, and for high load. So you can have lots of requests coming in and create a lot of invocations of the step function, that that was another limitation in the past. Also, these new step functions will only uh, be alive for five minutes before they were lasting for one year. So you could have a lot of um, waiting and it was okay. Now these step functions last for five minutes. So even less than the life of a Lambda function. So you have to be have that in mind when you are building uh, this type of workflows. If you're familiar with the standard step functions, nothing really much change. You will still use the state machines to build the lambdas and you will have the same kind of functionality when you are building it. The only difference is how it will run and how it will be priced. But I want to show you how you can define a step function express workflow in CloudFormation, in your SAM template, and how you can combine all these things as infrastructure as code, because I think this launch is one of the best ones. So let's go to the code and see this in action. So let's see this in action. I already created an application that has a simple uh, Lambda and the Express workflow in place. So let's look at it. It's here. I have one function, one step function, and the roles, policies, and a group to support this. So the function is a simple function. It's just printing the event in the console, nothing else. It doesn't have even an event uh, trigger because the step function is the one that will be triggering. So this is a very simple function. Then the step function is a state machine. And then we have to put a name to it, and we need to find that is the type express. The standard is the other type, and that was the traditional uh, step function. And if we don't put anything, it will decide that it's a standard one. Then if you want to have enable login, you need to log the configuration. You need to have login configuration. You need to define what is the uh, log group. So I created a log group here in the bottom of my template. And then I'm using that here. And then you have to set up how what level of login you want. You have error, warning, off, or everything. If you don't have this login configuration, then it will have the level automatically off and you will not be storing any login. The next thing you need to have, this is important, is to have the definition of your state machine. And for that, you will be using JSON to define your state machine. You will be using the state machine language as we were doing always with the step function. If you don't know anything about step functions, I have made many videos on them. There is playlist and I leave you a card and I also leave you some videos in the description box that you can check it out. So basically this state machine has only one state that is a Lambda state and it starts in the Lambda state and it's the type task that uh, state. It has um, 
basically invoking a lambda and here you have to find the function ARN, the Amazon resource name. So that's something you need to get for your function. That is this, this function that is on top of here. Then you have to put a payload and as this is the end state, we will decide that is true here. The next thing we have to do is to give a role to this uh, step function to be able to run the uh, invoke the lambda. So here we have the role definition and in here we have the role policy that is basically invoking the lambda, allowing these step functions to invoke the lambda and also allowing these step functions to put things in the logs and do things with the logs for CloudWatch. So after you have everything set up, then you deploy and you can go to the AWS console to see everything there. So I already deployed it, so I will go to the console and I will show it you how it looks. So we are in the console, we are opening a step functions. And here you can see uh, my function is the type express and it's active, so we can open it here. And you will see the uh, Amazon resource name for the role as well, the type when it was created. You can see the monitoring here. I already been executing this. So you can see that there is something going on in the monitoring. Then you can see that the logs are all, and this is the uh, logs uh, group for my function. And here is the definition. This is a JSON that we wrote in the CloudFormation defining our step function so only one state lambda and start and end so you can make this more complex with more states no problem so now i can press the button start execution i can give a name if i want or i can use that and then run this uh, input i can put something or not and i can start this this will start ex uh, successfully and we can see the logs if we want or then we can go to the monitoring tab and refresh it until we uh, start seeing something. So now we can see here that we have one execution that is successful, no errors. And here we can see that the duration was quite long, but it's okay. And this is our build duration. And you can see all the information here. If you click in view logs in CloudWatch, another tab will open and you will find yourself in the log group. And here you can see all the logs for that step function. So yeah, that's everything for today. The code, you can find it in GitHub. So go ahead and check it out. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And I hope you're enjoying the launch mass series. I am having a lot of fun making it. I'm very tired. Making a video every day is a lot, but it's very fun that I can keep the pace up. I'm on time still, so yeah. I cannot believe this. But yeah, if you want to know more about the functions or things I have done in the past or this topic, I leave you a lot of links in the description box. The code for this is also in the description box and as well as the blogs post that AWS put when they release this service. You can find a lot of information there, so go and check it out. And I see you tomorrow with another episode on launch mass. Bye bye.